Welcome back to Beneath the Long Man's Feet. I've got a story for you in this episode, but it's not one of my stories. It's an old story, an ancient story uh, with giants and Arthur and mountains. So I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a story called Rita Gua, Rita the Giant, and it tells of the formation of Mount Snowdon in Wales. Now, that's what we English call it. And Snowdon means snow-capped, I think, or Mount Snow-capped. Sounds silly, doesn't it? The Welsh call it Irrewitha, Irrewitha. So apologies to my Welsh friends for my pronunciation, but I want to tell you the story about how Irrewitha came to be the highest point in the Snowdonian mountain range. And I want to dedicate this story to a friend of mine, Ruthie, Ruthie Colcombe, who along with her husband, Gary, write and produce the wonderful Celtic myth pod show. A fantastic pod show that brings the tales of the ancient Celts to your fireside. You should check it out if you haven't already done so. And I dedicate this to Ruth because we were talking recently on their Facebook page and I mentioned this story and Ruth said she had never heard it and I promised to tell it to her one day. So this is me keeping my promise. Ruth, this is for you. This is Irwitha, Rita Guar's story. A long time ago, in the kingdom of Gwyneth, there were two lords who could not agree on anything. They would argue incessantly about every small thing from whose grass was greenest, to who had the most golden wheat, to whose grass was the best grazing lands, whose daughter was the fairest, whose son was the strongest, whose wife was the best cook, you name it, anything and everything, they would argue and argue and argue about. But one day, one of the lords thought he'd got the best of his neighbour. He called him over to his farm at midnight and he said, neighbour, I have the best grazing lands in the whole of this part of the world. Look, the heavens, the heavens are my grazing land and you will never find better grazing land than that, will you? Well, his neighbour was momentarily dumbstruck. He thought that his neighbour had finally got the better of him. But then he had an idea. He said, ah, but you see the moon. The moon is my shepherdess. And you see those stars. Those stars are my cattle, my sheep. And if my sheep and my cattle and my shepherdess are in the heavens, then surely the heavens are my grazing land and I own the rights to the grazing lands of heaven. Well, his neighbour was furious that his other neighbour had wriggled out of this and the two of them started arguing all night about who owned the grazing lands of heaven. And this argument turned into a fight. And the fight turned into a small-scale war as each of the lords got their own troops involved and a small battle ensued. Well, it was at this point that the Lord of Wales at the time, a giant by the name of Rita Gua, Rita the Giant, decided he would have to step in and deal with these two lords. He gathered his army together and he met the two lords on the battlefield and after a short battle, Rita's army was victorious. And to punish the two feuding lords, he did three things. The first thing he did was strip them of any notion that they owned the grazing rights to heaven. No, Rita would own the grazing rights to heaven. He was the Lord of Wales, and so they were his, obviously, to own. And then he used druid magic to turn them into oxen and tied them to his plough so they'd have to work together for a year and a day ploughing his fields. And before he did that, he took out his sword and he cut off each one of their beards and made himself a fine hat of beards. Now cutting off a warrior's beard? What an insult! Anyway, that might have been an end to the nonsense, except for the Lords of Wales decided that if Rita would claim the grazing rights of heavens above those Lords land, how long before he claimed the grazing rights above the heavens of the whole of Wales? And how long before he wanted the beards of the, the warriors of Wales? So the Lords of Wales gathered their army and went to battle with Rita. And once again, Rita and his army met the Lords of Wales and there was a battle, a short, sharp, ferocious battle. And Rita's army was once again victorious. And Rita did two things. He claimed the grazing rights of the whole of Wales for himself. The heavens of Wales were his to own. And then he lined up each of those Lords of Wales and took out his sword and one by one he cut off their beards and made himself a fine shirt from the beards to go with his hat. And that might have been the end of that nonsense, except for the Lords of England had heard about this and they were worried that Rita Gua might claim the grazing rights of heaven above England and then he might be after their beards too. So the Lords of England raised their armies and went to battle with Rita Gore and his army. 
and there was a longer battle this time, a ferocious battle, but Rita Guar's battle-hardened troops were soon victorious, and, and the whole of England was subdued by Rita, and he claimed the grazing rights of heaven above England, as well as Wales. And yes, he lined up each of those English lords, took out his sword, and one by one, he cut off their beards and made himself a fine cloak to go with the shirt and the hat. And that might have been an end to this nonsense of owning the grazing rights of heaven. But one day, a herald came to Rita and said, My lord, there is a king in England who still has his beard and has not subdued to you, has not agreed to give up the grazing rights of heavens. Who is this impotent lord? said Rita. His name is Arthur and he lives in Cornwall, said the herald. Rita gathered his army and he marched them down to Cornwall, marched them down to Arthur's fort, and he demanded Arthur did two things. He demanded Arthur give up his right to the grazing, the grazing lands of heaven. And the second thing he must do was shave off his fledgling beard to patch up the hole in Rita Guar's cloak. Well, Arthur just laughed and he said, Rita, I will not give up my rights to the grazing lands of heaven because nobody owns the heavens. The skies above are not mine to own, they're not yours to own. There are nobody around who can claim grazing rights to the lands of the heavens. And as for your second demand, my beard is small and fledgling, but I know someone with a beard much bigger than mine that will better plug that hole in your cloak. Who is this person? said Rita. Why, it's you, of course, said Arthur. Well, that just made Rita mad, and after much more talking and arguing, Rita decided it was time to attack, and so he got his army and he charged Arthur. Arthur drew Excalibur and he got his knights out of the fort and he met the charge of Rita's army, and it was a mighty clash, for Arthur's army was as strong as Rita's. And like a wave crashing against the shore, the two armies met. And like the wave ebbs and flows before crashing again, so did the two armies. Crashing against each other, ebbing away, crashing against each other. Backwards and forwards, the two armies raged for some six days. And as they went backwards and forwards in this mighty battle, the land beneath their feet started to rock up in the same way that a carpet does on a polished oak floor. And as the land behind their feet rocked up, the southern hills of England were formed. The south downs of England were formed by this battle between Arthur and Rita Guar. And after the sixth day, Arthur called a halt to the proceedings, for no, back, no army had gained advantage. Do you wish to surrender? said Rita. No, said Arthur. I wish to stop any more bloodshed between my men or your men. I wish to challenge you to single combat. And if I win, you give up this nonsense and you go back home. And if you win, well, you may do as you please. Rita agreed, for Arthur was a strong warrior, but he was only a small man, whereas Rita was a giant, and surely he would get the better of just one man. Rita drew his great big broadsword. Arthur drew Excalibur, and the two lords clashed in the mighty clash. They said that thunder was caused as their swords hit themselves, lightning as the sparks flew from their shields and their blades. And once again, the, the two warriors went backwards and forwards, creating more valleys and hills in the aftermath of their struggle. And after the third day, finally, Arthur had gained the advantage and he had Excalibur at Rita Guar's throat. And Rita Guar had no choice but to yield to Arthur. Arthur called his herald over and he cut off Rita's beard and then he stitched it into the cloak of beards. But he didn't put it around his own shoulders, no, no. He put the mantle back over the shoulders of Rita and he said, Rita, you have been vanquished. You have been defeated in battle. This notion of owning the heavens and the grazing lands of the stars must end. Nobody owns the stars. Not me in victory, not you in defeat. Give up that notion, go back to Wales and rule fairly and gently and this matter is ended. But if you start this nonsense again, I will find you and I will continue this battle and we will finish it to the death. Rita agreed. He had no choice. At the end of the day, he was the vanquished um, person. So he often grabbed his troops back and he marched back to Wales humbly. And when he got to Wales, he did exactly as Arthur had suggested. He ruled the land of Wales fairly 
and justly and very humbly. And despite his foolishness of his early years, the people of Wales grew to love their giant. Rita Gua was a much loved figure from the mightiest lords to the lowliest peasants. So when it came for him to die years later, they all came to lay a stone on his body, as was the custom to raise a cairn above the body of those that you loved. And every one of those people came to Wales to lay a stone on the giant's body. Now the giant's body, Rita's body being a giant, was, was quite big to start off with. But so many people came to lay a stone on that cairn that that cairn grew and grew and grew and grew in size until it was the highest point in Gwynedd, the highest point in the Snowdonian range. And it became known as the cairn of Rita Gua, or Rita's cairn, which has been shortened over the time to Irewitha, and that is why the highest point in Snowdon is Irewitha, Rita's cairn, and not Mount Snowdon. So that is my story that's told. I love that story. It tells of Arthur and giants and the formation of natural world. What's not to like about it? So Ruth, I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, but if not, perhaps you'll tune in again and find a story you do like at a later date. The next time uh, I have one of my own compositions. So do join me on Beneath the Long Man's Feet on Facebook or on YouTube. And as always, until we meet again, I now bid you hail and farewell. <laughs>